Hey everybody, I'm Hamza Kramza and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to go for 20 franc nights by 20 minutes and we're also going to try to go for 30 nights before 23 minutes. This is going to be a really tight build, it's mostly geared towards a pocket team build but it can maybe be pulled off in certain rank 1v1 situations and we'll get into that in a little bit. Hope you all enjoy. So for this week, I'm going to be stepping away from the standard build orders for just a little bit to go into some Civ specific builds, the first of which obviously being the 20x20 20 20 Frank Knight Flood. So this build is inspired by an old AoE 2 player by the name of HC Shanks back in 2006, where he was able to pull the same thing off of Tootins. Now even today, you can still do this build with Tootins, but I wanted to make it possible with a stronger Civ that brings a little bit more to the table than, you know, uh, plus one. Uh, armor on infantry <laughs> and also a civ that has some type of strong like logical transition into knights so in order to do this build order in 20 minutes there's a few problems so um, you need to solve about you know three of these in order for you to have this be somewhat viable so um, the first is you need to have enough wood to make and refresh farms so um, having enough wood on hand to actually go and make those farms is always a big issue um, and we're going to see how we can solve that in the video as Franks. Two, you need to have enough food and gold economy to actually sustain, you know, building 20 nights and in this case building even 30 nights. And three, you need to make it there untouched and preferably you're hidden from the opponent as well, right? So they don't know it's coming and this strategy is pretty easily countered if it gets scouted because all you have to do is build 50 pikemen and it's a lot cheaper. So. Hopefully we'll be able to answer these questions as Franks, and the only thing that's left to do is just go do it. So, let's go check it out. Alright, and let's get started. So we're going to build our two houses right off the bat. We're going to go and get our cows, in this case, and our sheep. And we are going to send one in a TC and scout with the others. Our first six population, in terms of the villagers, are going to go on to food. So, just for the sheep under the town center. And this isn't any deviation from, you know, any type of normal build. What we are looking for, we're looking for our deer, we're looking for our boars, and we're looking for our other sheep. And what we're looking to do actually with all of that is we're trying to get some early deer lore, or just like luring deer in general at this point. So this is going to be necessary for this build. You can't do this build as Franks without luring deer. Um, we're going to put our 8 through 11 population over onto wood and um, on hideout, um, on this particular uh, update and just um, hideout in general, sometimes the deer spawn inside of your gates. If they don't, then that's no problem, right? All you would have to do is either delete some walls to lure in the deer from the outside or you would have to you know, prop open a gate with a deer. So we're going to do couple deer lures here, there we go, okay, perfect, and we're still putting our wood villagers there. Um, you know, you can do this uh, on maps like Arena, you can do this on uh, Arabia, but you know, for ranked 1v1s, hideout is going to be your best shot at pulling this off because I really don't think it's possible in any other setting, um, for 1v1 at least. Um, for team games, if you're pocket, maybe you can get away with playing this on Arabia. Um, or if you're team game, then maybe you can get away with um, actually um, having one of your uh, allies bust open the wall and then you throw the knights in or you know, something to that effect. But this is really, as a 1v1 strategy, only effective on hideout. So we're going to send a 12th population over to food, and that's just going to be you know, another deer underneath the town center at this point. Now, I'm not going to specify if that 12th should be luring a boar or if it should be eating sheep. You just want these villagers to be eating food. So the 13th population is going to go over and build your couple houses. Um, I know like someone like the Viper or you know just any other pro would kind of build one house here and then build another house later, but I like to kind of build them both just to get them out of the way. So then we're going to send our 14 through 19 population onto food, right? So um, we're going to lower boar here. Um, let's say you didn't find your deer this early, then you maybe would have lured a boar earlier. Or if you couldn't find either of those, maybe you were just eating sheep this whole time. Most important thing is that you're eating the, uh, you're eating food. 
Now, another reason why this strategy can work for Franks and not for most of their civs is when we're actually building a mill over here for these berries, Frank villagers actually gather food faster from berries than any other civilization, so 25% faster to be exact. So that is going to help us out a lot here. And we're just keeping that village distribution kind of even as best we can. And we're going to organize our you know, herdables over here. And let's put that onto berries. Okay, perfect. And see, like we have a lot of villagers on board right now and we've eaten all of our deer, so I might as well send these over to actually go and gather some sheep. We're actually going to go, our boar is running low now, so we're going to go get the boar. And perfect. So the main objective in uh, you know, gathering all this food is to be able to delay your farms until feudal. Because another bonus that the Franks actually get is that you get free horse collar. So one of the biggest problems when you're trying to pull this strategy off with other civilizations is you have to invest that 75 wood, 75 uh, food into horse collar. And just uh, we're going to put our 20 through 24 population onto wood. So uh, just to go back to explaining kind of why this is possible with Franks. If we can delay our farms until feudal, then we get that extra, that free horse collar. And we can actually build our farms going into feudal. So um, we're minimizing the amount of time that we're actually spending without um, food income there. Now you can do, like I, I tried to do this with Vikings and um, a few other civilizations, but it just wasn't working, Chinese even. Um, but Franks are the, the only civ that I found that actually even have like a reasonable um, tech into uh, a later, uh, with, uh, with their knights and, and all the rest. So with our 23rd villager, we're going to build a house. We're also going to send seven of our people under there to gather sheep. So we're going to have seven on berries at this point, and we're going to have seven shepherds, right? So even if you were luring deer at this point, you should be done deer. Um, if you're luring your boars, you should be done luring your boars, and we're all good there, right? So now our 24 through 28 population villagers are going to go onto gold. So... Oop, no, I accidentally sent him the wrong way. And let's go scoop him up. Okay, perfect. So we're going to scoop him up. And throughout this video, you're going to see, um, you know, some small, like, hiccups here and there. And that's kind of unacceptable considering how tight of a build this is. And it's actually going to delay me by about 15 seconds. So we're not going to get the prettiest 20-minute uh, um, night. Um, but... It's still kind of, you know, showing the, the whole point. If you do this build perfectly, then you should be able to put out 20 knights by 20 minutes. As well as 30 knights by around like 20, 20, or 22, 30. So it's, it's really, really nice. Um, okay, so we're just getting our herbals. And we're gonna click up the feudal. Okay, perfect. So on our way to feudal, we're just consuming our, you know, our herbals. So the sheep and the cows and we have our four on gold. And we're just kind of relaxing at this point, right? So this is one of the few times in the build where everything's, if everything's going as planned, then you should just be scouting around with your, you know, uh, scout. Um, if you are trying to pull this off on a hideout um, in a 1v1 setting, do not have your scout outside the walls maybe at this point um, because, you know, if your opponent hits feudal earlier, then you're going to have a pretty bad time getting harassed by them. We're also going to build our barracks around 60% on the way to feudal. I messed up here with the herdables. I accidentally killed both of those cows, which is absolute disaster, but whatever. Um, the other thing about pulling this off in 1v1 is a lot of times you're going to get tower rushed or mana arms rushed or something or another that's going to disrupt your build. This is, uh, it's risky. I'm not going to lie. If you're going for this in a ranked game, you have some balls because I wouldn't actually do this um, too often myself. However, I, I did do it once just for the video, but um, you know, that was uh, I had to do it for the video. <laughs> so here we are, we're gonna build, once we reach our castle, we're gonna build our stable and our blacksmith and we're gonna send our next two villagers over to gold and we're just gonna start building farms, right? So we're gonna use all these herders to build our farms. We're gonna try to get around nine when the void wood is available. And also, once one of those builders is done, we're gonna send one of those over to gold. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna keep, we're gonna build two farms with these guys. 
and we're gonna click castle. Okay, perfect. Now we're up. Now we have 30 villagers, and all of our farm, all of our farms are horse collared at this point. So they're gonna have a lot of extra food, and they're not gonna expire on us, which means we don't have to worry about refreshing them, right? We don't need to stockpile wood to go and refresh these, and um, we should be okay there. We're gonna build a house and a stable um, once we have our nine farms. And it looks like we're finishing up there. Perfect. Okay. And we have the house. We're going to get the stable in a second um, with that same gold villager. Now, I've also theorized actually, you know, subtracting one of these lover camps, but I just, I felt like, you know, if I am building this build to be you know, somewhat viable, then there needs to be some form of, like, uh, sustainability with your economy. Like, you, this can't just be an all in, like, you need to either do critical damage with this build, or um, you need to, um, yeah, you just need to do critical damage, or you need to like straight out win. So we're also going to be doing, and you saw it up on the screen there just a little bit earlier. We're going to be building farms with every 60 wood that we get with our wood villagers. So we're going to build up to 12 farms, and we're going to have two of our stables, and we're going to be producing, hopefully, non-stop out of these two stables. Okay, so there's our 12th farm, there's our next house, so we're going to keep up the house building, we're going to send, we're going to build another villager, send them the gold, so that we're going to have 12 on gold, we're going to keep up the night production, and we are going to send that first one over to gold, like we said, and then we're going to send all our new villagers over to wood. We're also going to build a few farms here. So we're going to build another farm with our wood villagers, so that way we have 13 farms. And we are cruising. Okay, perfect. So now we're producing. So I actually made a little bit of a mistake here. So I queued up only um, two villagers to go over to wood. You actually want to send up until 33, or all of your new villagers over to your wood line there, as long as you can afford the food. And the reason why you want to do that is you just want to keep building up wood for more farms. And also that third staple, importantly. So we're building a house, making sure that we're not going to get house. And this is this is really like the art part of it, right? So we're just kind of trying to balance our economy while staying, you know, uh, with constant production, trying to see where we're low on resources. We have a little bit of gold stockpiled up, but that's perfect. That's what we need. We're gonna build a stable. We're gonna produce villagers when we can. It's a little bit difficult to say when we can, but um, just uh, whenever you get around 60 wood, just after you build this uh, stable, build a, a farm. And also, if you are gonna get housed, prioritize the house over the farm. And okay, so we have two of our stables. Now we have three stables. And lazy on the production there. Okay. And there we go. Now we have all three of our farms producing nights. So at this point, it should be kind of a non-stop flow. We're just going to keep building our farms when we have our 60 wood. And our nights should just be coming and flowing through. Let's make sure we don't get housed. I think we don't have any housed, actually. Now, notice at this point, I've actually idled my TC. Um, I don't want to be spending too much food on villagers when I'm actually trying to get those 20 knights. If you are going for the 30 knights, um, you can maybe actually um, stop producing, or, or continue producing villagers, rather, um, at a more steady rate than you would if you're going for 20 knights in 20 minutes. But we actually do want that, that pretty number. So, we have nights right now there's our 20 perfect so we have our 20 and we got that around 2020 so we could have got that a little bit sooner but it was just you know getting housed and you know uh, villager allocation was a little bit messed up but we still got it in around 20 minutes and at this point you can make a you have to make a few decisions right so now we can go and attack the enemy and bust the gate and go in with 20 villagers and the timing here is really important right so you're um, your opponent maybe has some, uh, 
you know, some, if they're going for a boom like you are, then they have two TCs, if they're going for archers, then you're going to run to archers. But really, you can pretty much face anything that your enemy has at this point, and go and take it. Now, you can continue to produce knights here, because, and that's what we're doing here, because we're going for the 30 and the, and the 22 30. But, what you can also do is you can actually pause production on some of these knights just to go for scale barring armor, which is the armor upgrade for your cavalry, and also go for um, the chain armor for your uh, knights. So we go, and we have 29 knights, and here's our 30th popping out right now, we're going to get the armor. And I'd really like to go with 30 knights. Technically, or your opponent should have 3 TCs down if they are going for some type of boom on this map. And they should have like a small army that should, you know, be trying to deal with this and, um, you know, maybe has even scouted it. So we're going to go over and we're going to charge in and take care of business. We got a 30 knights, perfect. I'm going to get forging here just because it's against AI, but really you'd want to save up that food and go for scale barding, or sorry, not scale barding, but the uh, chain uh, barding armor for our cavalry. We're just going to keep building houses, we're going to keep building villagers. Now, notice none of our farms have expired at all during this build. So they are going to expire eventually, but we're going to have enough villagers on wood to actually go and replenish those. Um, we can maybe even go to 2 TC play. But at this point, the build is pretty much over, right? So we've had a really successful... Um, you know, 30 nights in 22:30. We've also had our uh, 20 nights in around 20 minutes. So this is really, really nice. If you're doing this in a team game, it is potentially game ending. If you attack the pocket or if you attack a flank um, with these knights, then you're going to be taking their town center, just like you would be taking your town center here, um, and you'll be causing a lot of havoc. You're going to force a lot of response out of the uh, teammates. And that is the Frank Knight build for you all. I'd really only suggest using this in a team game or in a 1v1 hideout situation where you can kind of sneak those three staples in, in the back or, you know, kind of surprise your opponent there. But let me know if you guys have any suggestions on how to improve the build or if you have any questions on how to actually approach it. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next video and have a great rest of your day.